been making a huge amount of headway in our neighbor's field down the way. We'll talk about this area probably in another video, but we're starting to use our electric rotary plow uh, BCS, which I'll talk about in greater detail for sure when we're when we have it out here. But we're prepping beds for uh, nursery transplants for the fall, like really luscious, plushes beds for that. And potatoes are coming out in a very thorough way. We're definitely two thirds, if not more, of the way done. And each of the beds that have that really dark mulch covering, that's where potatoes were. They were lifted very thoroughly. Uh, soil broken up, rocks extracted and brought to a rock pile, which we'll think about for another project, and planted to garlic. We've got these last two rows. This is the ancient blue, which is a really beautiful dark blue, very disease resistant, I think old Peruvian varietal, which maybe someday we'll offer up for seed. It seems like a really winning, uh, special, unique type of potato. And there's another whole row of Kennebec. I think Juan today will be taking most of that for his needs and to share with friends and family. Um, but these are the last two rows of potatoes. You can see the distinct difference between where the potatoes are when they come out and when the garlic is planted in. And here this morning, uh, waiting for our friend Joe to come by and Juan will be here shortly. And so I'm on my own for the moment, just working on getting in some elephant garlic. You can see here I'm using the hori to open up the soil and push those in and this gives you a sense of the flow. So going further along, the garlic would be covered with soil and covered with this mulch, which is like a bedding from a pheasant farm nearby uh, that they were getting rid of. It was just sitting in a pile, so we're using it. Anyway, garlic goes in, covered with soil, mulched. You can see the other day, some folks were through here digging potatoes. So I'm using a little tool here to hook rocks and break up clods a little and a hooked fork to work through and break up the clods. So this is where potatoes were and certainly not easy to plant garlic right in. Normally I do this with two hands, but you get the idea. But we're pulling all the weeds, dropping them into the walkways, harvesting the rocks, shaping the beds, planting garlic, mulching, <laughs> and then we'll mulch again later on with some hay and shredded leaves to really feed the garlic and bed them down for the winter. This is a formula we've used for years and years now. It seems extremely exhaustive and maybe over the top in uh, preparing, but it makes for some of the largest heads we could imagine. And it leaves the beds in great condition for future use. Really love how this is shaping up. So there'll be six nice solid rows of garlic. When it's done, that one's done, fully done, fully done, nearly done, not at all, kind of done. And then once the sunflowers are harvested out, which I've been, I'd love to hear in the comments, do you have some suggestions of the best timing? It looks like this, you know, very clearly this one's not ready, but some that look like they almost might be ready. The seeds are sizing up in there, but from what I understand of it, the very top should be starting to turn yellow. It should be yellow and browning down in here before you think about harvesting. Let me know in the comments for those of you that have harvested sunflowers in a serious way. I definitely don't want to miss the harvest. I kind of imagine if we keep getting rains, this sort of thing is not going to be ideal for the sunflowers ripening. So what's the balance there? I'd love to get lots of these. Our plan is to harvest with loppers, uh, dry them, harvest the corn out. We've taken the butternut out. We've harvested the amaranth and then reclaim these as two more rows for production. Uh, later on. This middle field will deserve its own video. We're focusing on some extremely deep deposition game for bed building on the boundary. So this will be winter squash next year. Basically it's going to be a contiguous compost windrow. All the weeds, all the clippings, all the hay, all the leaves, all the wood chips we can get on here. Some of the winter squash or the ornamental gourds that were on here this year did incredibly well. They're starting to die back now and the grasses are taking over. But uh, the boundary of mulch, you can see here some more hay queued up. That'll be a way to define the edges of some of these areas. The interior, we're gonna actually work up with the rotary plow and convert over. That'll be its own thorough video for sure. It's nice to see some of the nursery bands through here really popping. I went through with an electric weed whacker with a very sturdy square uh, string, a 105 string for those of you that weed whack 
And that allowed me to really bite underneath these rows, for example, of Japanese walnut. And then Juan went through with an electric push mower with a bagger and harvested out the walkways to really give the nursery plants in here a last hurrah to pop and get sunlight and finish off for the season. So got a massive amount of digging in our future. There's third year senna's. Once we harvest the seeds out of there, we'll definitely be digging those out and making them available in the spring. Some really beautiful Japanese walnut for uh, local offering. Some of the plants in here, like the block of river locust down there, they're five, six feet tall. They won't fit in a box anymore, so they're only for local folks. But then we've got rows of the second and third year hazelnut seedlings that just look so good. Planted in between rows of garlic two years ago and cut back by rabbits in their first winter and there's just a whole sea of them. It goes on and on and on for about 100 feet. There's probably a hazelnut every inch or two inches down in here. Really beautiful plants. Good reminder with perennial plant nursery, sometimes a bed can be growing a thing for two or three years before you dig them out and they just get to exist there. You get to be habitat for little creatures. Um, do some nice ecosystem service and then when we dig them out with nursery spades this fall it'll leave an incredibly deep bed for whatever's next. Another band through here of black walnuts and hazelnuts as well. These were actually, I won't share, won't share the entire story, but a bunch of years ago we went to ship 150 black walnuts and hazelnuts to someone out in Oklahoma. It got lost in the mail, the package, for six weeks. Came back, all the seedlings were extremely lanky and pale, covered in mold. Slowly but surely, we eased them back into the light in a bucket of water, transplanted them out into this field, and probably 50% are here now. So we'll dig these plants up, little rescues from six weeks stuck in a box to from New York to Oklahoma, back to New York. But they get to live out their life somewhere. We'll dig them up this fall and see where they go. That's some really nice field-ready hazelnuts to be sure right there. River locust, my gosh, what a beautiful plant. So this is a solid thicket, hundreds of seedlings in here, and they will get dug up this fall as well. This will be a hard reset in this area, and all the nitrogen that they had developed into the soil will be liberated for whatever the next crop is. At the moment, it seems like the sweet potatoes, the annual that's growing next to them is enjoying the fertility coming through. Those are some really happy leaves. Deep mulch, perennial plantings, long-term rotations, and soil building seem to confer a lot of vitality in plants and a lot of beauty. There's just so much more to look at, but I should get back to work. I should prep up a little more soil and get some of the elephant garlic seed in there, wait for Joe and Juan, and then we'll start focusing on the final potato rows. Probably by the end of this week, we should be done digging potatoes and planting garlic and mulching garlic, which would be an immensely early, wonderful feat to have accomplished for this season. Uh, it's earlier than would be ideal, but we're expecting our little new person in early October, and I just would like to be done with these major physical projects before then. And I think with enough mulch, they should be okay. Uh, we've tested mid-September in the past for garlic planting, and it's worked beautifully. I wouldn't encourage folks that have seed garlic in Zone 5B New York style context to plant this early in general, but it does work if you need to. That is that. Let me know what you want to see me zoom in on. What, if, what did I glance over in this field that is of particular interest to folks? Bear in mind, I will talk about, you know, the bare open soil there, what the transition plan is. The spoiler is it's going to be a really complex perennial nursery, but also for beauty so that folks walking on the road will see Sochan and Black Eyed Susan and Echinacea and Marshmallow and Ella Campaign, as well as cuttings and all sorts of things. But that'll be for another time. For now, we'll end with this monster. So close. When do you think I should cut these? Let me know, folks.